driven a kilometre or so up to the top of the hill. From the source of the Okavanga you can see this building, it's obviously a church. There's such a wonderful energy about this place. So we decided to camp the night here. I am on the 23rd day of my expedition to find the source of the Okavango Delta. Yesterday I accomplished my goal. I'm in the highlands of Angola and the Okavango River begins in this river valley, overlooked by a small plateau and a derelict church. Having found the very source of the river, I've filled up a bottle to take with me as I follow this river to its final resting place. But before I do that, more of Angola is beckoning. Right, heading north, away from the battle areas, away from the war, to find uh, the other side of Angola. I'm now going to try and actually experience it, um, not think too much about the, the, the war and its past, but a little bit more about what this country is all about. We have about 400 kilometers to go today uh, before nightfall. It's uh, one o'clock, so five-ish. Uh, we'll be setting up camp, so it's basically the rest of the day, it's sitting on the long straight road. Not so fast. I think that was wishful thinking. This, I guess, is why 90% of the cars in this country are Toyotas, 5% are Mitsubishis, and the 5% are everything else. Sometimes the roads are absolutely atrocious. And you just feel for your car when you drive on them wonder how it stays in one piece. We've made it a habit of trying to find a campsite by about 4.30 each afternoon. Andre, would you like us to wait so you can first can have a look or is it a designated one? But because there are very few official campsites in Angola, each afternoon we have to find our own. Because the schedule on this particular trip is a little different from the, uh, the trips that Live the Journey actually normally run, uh, we're in a situation where now we've basically got to find a new campsite. Again, it's a, it's a case of um, finding uh, safety away from the, hopefully away from the main road. And um, you can't just drive off anywhere because of the risk of landmines. So it'll um, be interesting to see how he manages this one. Uh, there's um, Andre and Gonzalez going off to find a suitable place to set up camp. Uh, but what about the 8 million landmines still lying buried in Angola? It only takes one of them to really spoil our day. So the war carried on in this area till 2002, mm. uh, 2005 that, uh, actually. And that's supposed to make me feel better? Quito was always in the war. It was, first there was a Bantu war, then the Portuguese came and it was a war between the Portuguese and the Bantus. And then after they were kicked up, it was a heavy, heavy Unita and Fapla war area until 2005. So this area was always part of the war. Yeah. So uh, let's rather try and see if it's safe before we just pull off the road. The guy saying is, was the mine a long time ago. Okay. We can try to go, there's not a problem. Okay. And we will see what. Okay. Yeah. But we're welcome. Yeah, we are welcome. They are saying like that. No? I did not ask you, are the. The chief for this place, but they are saying that we are welcome. Okay. Yeah. Standing now on the main street of Awamba, we're just actually passing through as our as our convoy travels west towards the coast. Busy, busy, bustling city uh, under a, an intense state of repair but every now and again you find these wonderful scenes of buildings that have been destroyed by bullet holes and bombs and next to them a bustling hotel and apartment blocks love this kind of place
passing through a small town called Chinkwa. All along the route, you'll notice that there are flags outside villages, outside shops, in the towns of various political parties. This is the headquarters of UNITA in the area. And we've asked them if we can go inside. And they've said yes. And maybe this is where the mystery will end for me. Why was there a war in the first place? Okay, as you can see here on the flag, UNITA flag, is there a sun rising and a chicken. That was a, a, a fight when the, uh, Washington called them, called the two parties to Washington to ask to make a difference of why they are fighting. Then Salim said, the sun coming, the chicken was already on the tree, was already, the chicken was already screaming. Then the emperor, that's why on the emperor flag you find a star. The Agustinho Neto, the president of the emperor said, before the chicken climb on the top, the star was on the sky. That's why you find this flag with a chicken and sun rising. And another flag for the opposite part of them, they have a star on the top. That was the result of their fight. One said, before the sun is rising, the chicken was singing. And the other part said, before the chicken climbing on the top of the tree to sing, the star was on the sky. Is that the meaning of that? Oh, I see. So it was about a chicken. I mean, which one was first, the chicken or the star? So then, uh, why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the UNITA offices on the other side. We are dropping off the escarpment, heading west in amongst the baobab forests. We have gathered outside the coastal town of Lobito. Andre has asked us to gather together for a pre-Lobito briefing. I'm driving into Lobito at the moment. <clears throat> So please, I want all the vehicles bumper to bumper. Now the reason for this is that it is absolutely mad, there's no rules, it's all Angolan rules. So bumper to bumper, and even with bumper to bumper, the taxis and the motorbikes are going to push right in between. They, they're going like to push in there and they're going to cause chaos, but that's the way it goes. And the problem is I cannot slow down because I have to go with the flow of the traffic. And uh, so please, bumper to bumper, and we're going to hit the madhouse, and hopefully we will be alive at the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Now, Lobito is a coastal town. I can't wait to see the sea after all this jungle and bush. Can't wait to see the sea. I have never particularly enjoyed traveling through any of the villages, and it's because A, driving on the right, and they're mad. They're chaotic. And this, apparently, is the most chaotic of all. A small camera gets attached to the front bar to record the action. We're good to go. <laughs> so you can get off the traffic thing. Now guys, go, go, go. Lobito is Angola's chief port, or at least it was population said to be around 270,000, although by looking at it, it appears to be much more, and most of them are on the road this afternoon. on the steering wheel it's, and, and that is why they're so popular in Africa it's not okay. the fact it's not the fact that they're so reliable go, 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 go. and they last forever and they don't break on these terrible roads it's because they've got the steering wheel and if you <coughs> you don't have to press it you just have to sneeze you just have to move violently in the cab and the hooter will work and they absolutely oh, love it good recovery 
Hello, copy, Charlie. Star Trek. 